Hello and welcome to Shelby Township Parks and Recreation in the News. I'm Joe Youngblood. With us today we have Mike Ward, Shelby Township resident. Mike, thanks for being on the show today. And, uh, and as we know, when we have Mike Ward on the show, that means we have some important race news coming up. <laughs> and, and Mike, boy, we have some special news here. We have Run the Creek, which is going to be held at uh, Cherry Creek Golf Co mm -hmm. Course, and it's going to be called a Glow Run. So tell us about that, because I, I, I saw this the other day, and about this Glow Run, and I've never seen anything like it. Well, it started back, we had a, a gal that, uh, from my race director's association for uh, Macomb that puts on a race, a, a glow run type run up in, in uh, Stony Creek Park. Okay. And it's for Cassie Hines Cancer, or yes. uh, a race. And it's an awesome event. It was really her that uh, first started this off. And then back in August, um, I was at a, a breakfast, awards <coughs> breakfast, and Mark Hackle approached me about it and said, hey, you're the okay. race guy. <laughs> he said, there's all kinds of 5Ks, but we need something unique. And he said, have you thought about doing a night run? So that's what's prompted it all, and okay. one thing led to another, and lo and behold, here we are how many months later, and with the tremendous cooperation from Cherry Creek and Earl Weber over there, uh, we're going to run the 5K course across the entire fairway from uh, hole number one through nine. Hmm. It'll be a 5K course. We'll have a half-mile kids run. Okay. And the amazing part, the entire course is going to be lit up with these very interesting little glow torches that can either be lit or solid colors along the entire course, because it will be dark. Uh, dark course will be after dark. And I don't know uh, if the camera can pick that up, Mike, but uh, I'll tell you what, um, I've seen these before, and when it's dark, um, they're going to stick out uh, beautiful, and how, yeah. uh, the way they glow, it's going to be uh, just a, a great scene on the golf course. Right, and it's such a beautiful golf course and setting. And then we've got mm -hmm. these neat wristbands that glow that everybody will have. Uh, and then to help us guide it along, with, uh, we have these wonderful little flashlights that are a light here, a torch here, a pencil in case you have to take any notes while you're running your race, write your splits down. It's incredibly lightweight. Uh, they'll all be fluorescent shirts, and then all the finishers will get this awesome glow metal. This is a pretty much close to the final product for it as well. And i got to tell you, we've always mentioned Gene Lambert from Special Olympics, Correct. near and dear to both of our hearts. Definitely. Uh, gets, allows us to raise all this money and get more of your kids to the event. And she's a genius. She comes up, you know, as soon as we had the idea, um, uh, making some progress moving forward, all of a sudden she's got the lightweight flashlights and the glow wristbands and, and the little torch things and all. And it was like... Uh, yeah. just an amazing thing to see <clears throat> develop. People like those giveaways, no doubt about it. Now, yeah. Mike, you mentioned Special Olympics, and um, at, here at Shelby Township Parks and Rec, we have the uh, Summer Olympics, we have the Winter Olympics, we have the uh, Special Needs basketball team that goes to the Olympics. Something very important to us and for the special needs uh, community uh, members uh, in Shelby Township. <clears throat> for all that you do, it, it is amazing, and I know, you know firsthand how much the athletes enjoy it. You have the athletes coming out to the run, and I know the uh, Glow Run, you're going to have some athletes out there also. Um, <clears throat> what, what is your feeling uh, from the community when these runs, they know it's for the Special Olympics, and you talk to the people at the races, do, they, do you th have the feeling they, they're coming out too because they know they're supporting the Special Olympics? Absolutely. Uh, in every situation, people know that if I'm involved in a race, there's got to be a charity tie-in. Definitely. I don't take a race director's fee. I don't make a living doing it. Mm -hmm. I do it for the good of the charity and they know it's going to be a charity event and it's going to be a good event. We've talked many times on previous shows about the successful races and all, and which is part of what we're going to have here, you know, putting it all together. But people, when they know it's for a good cause, they tend to make that extra effort to sign up and get more people signed up. And I think that's happening with this race, too. Oh, it definitely is. And I know on behalf of Parks and Rec and the Special Olympic athletes, can't thank you enough. Mike, Saturday, April 16th, Run the Creek, the Glow Run. Um, if somebody wants to register, how do they register? Well, they can do it a couple ways. They can stop at any of the Hanson stores and pick up the form. They can go online to eastsideracingcompany.com and pick it up there. Uh, they can contact me, and I'll put my phone number out here, 586-484-5523. I can email them the forms or whatever. If you register online, there's a small fee for it. If you mail it in or drop it off, whatever, there's no fee for you other than the race fee itself. Okay. Mike, you have a lot of sponsors for uh, these races that you do, and the money goes back to the Special Olympics. What's the key? I know you're out there knocking on doors and meeting with people, and how, do you, how are you able to get so much donations back to the Special Olympics and the different fundraisers you do? Um, I always wonder how we always get so successful. As you know, for the Jingle Bell run, we had over $8,000 in right. sponsors, and we donated 11000 And for this run, before we even officially had this launch, before we even had the press conference, the Shelby Kiwanis stepped up, and they are, had been talking to me already about trying to do something for the community to help, and they made a $500 donation to be a sponsor. 
Right on. And then right behind it, Camp Bow Wow, one of the new places opening up on 23 and Shaner, mm -hmm. said, oh, we loved your Jingle Bell run. Can we come back and do it for your Glow Run? And now we're starting to pick up other sponsors, and that's the big thing we need right now is uh, we could really benefit from getting more sponsors, okay. whether it's 100 or 200 or do 50 or 500. It's a small amount. You know, and that a lot of people said that I can handle. We don't right. look for $5,000 sponsorship. Not that we would turn it down, <laughs> but it's a lot easier sure. and a lot more people uh, become part of it. And a lot of the s companies that do that are individuals. Uh, you may not think it's a big deal. They love seeing their little logo on the back of the shirt or their name or whatever. And, and that's kind of cool too. And the sponsors are the, the two most important things are the sponsors mm -hmm. and the people that sign up for the race. We need people to sign up and uh, to make the, the event successful. Right, definitely. Uh, Mike, you mentioned uh, Mark Hackle earlier, and I know recently uh, yourself and Mark Hackle and uh, Township Supervisor uh, Rick Stathakis and Gene Lambert had a press conference at Cherry Creek. Uh, I saw the clip on that, and boy, that turned out really good. It looks like you guys had a good time. It was interesting because uh, I had never done a press conference. Mm -hmm. So I came, came dressed, you know, suit and tie mm -hmm. and the whole bit, and uh, we had every, everybody was there. Earl Weber did a great job getting it set up for us and all that. And as uh, Mark comes in and he keeps it real loose and real, real fun is really what he did. Sure. And he was really excited about it. I didn't realize how excited. And then all of a sudden they said, okay, we'll start the press conference. Michael, you're up first. And I looked at him and said, I am? And mm -hmm. what do I do at a press conference? <laughs> so I did my normal thing about the race and, and how it evolved and all that and made my pitch for sponsors and all. And then Mark came up right behind and he was, he was just incredible promoting it. He's sure. going to be running it along with his wife. Oh, is he? Okay. He did say that I put him in a, in a hot seat because I've seen him in many races before, and that's how he knows me. And he always tends to win in the master groups. Mm -hmm. And he told the story when he was a sheriff, everybody wanted to beat the sheriff. Well, now he's a county executive, so there's even <laughs> more of a push to go out and run against Mark Hackle yeah, and, beat the, and, and beat the county executive. But, but he's supporting it. He's working on getting us sponsors for it and getting us publicity. And the biggest winner of all really is going to be uh, Special Olympics, and then a small portion of it's going to Parks and Rec for right. you for uh, some less fortunate families so they can participate in some of your good events. Definitely. So that's part of what we're doing as well. Definitely, thank you very much. Now Mike, also uh, the uh, Run the Creek um, Glow Run is one of uh, many races that you run. You have some other runs coming up if you want to touch on that for us so people can start putting them on the calendar. Yep, number one run coming up is the Bill Roney 5K run. It's a traditional run done at the Hanson's Utica store in memory of, of Bill Roney who was a very, very supportive guy of the running community. Mm -hmm. did a lot and he died from cancer. So it's kind of like, let's do something special for him, which they do, and it's coming up. I, I can't tell how many years they've been doing this one now, oh, and really? they've renamed it after him. Yeah, I could nice. almost think you could use that as a warm-up for our race. It's March, the weather way March is right now. Yeah. This might turn out to be a nice day. Beautiful. Yeah. But we'll have that one coming up in March, and then in April, or, uh, early May we have the Back to the Beach run, which okay. is one of the biggest runs in the county at, at Stony Creek. And Joe uh, is very good uh, about donating money to Special Olympics from that race, Definitely. many charities. And the amount of volunteers for that is incredible. And then our now I will hold up the little card, our Go for the Gold, our biggie that we've been doing for, this will be our 12th year, Joe, doing Isn't this. Is it 12th year? Already? Yeah, Jeez. we're probably up around eighty or $90,000 over that 11 years. And that's one of the biggest fundraisers right there, that race alone for the Special Olympics yep. uh, Area 14. Yep, so we draw 5K, 10K runners, walkers and all uh, for all that as well. So we've got a good schedule. Even a special one I wanted to mention that I, I can't officially, officially announce it, but unofficially. You all know there's a new stadium going up in Utica. Yes, there so is. So Fast Bob Bosquart from the Hanson Running Store, one of my good friends that helps us with all of our races as well and does the timing, they are setting up for a race two days before the official opening, which is Memorial Day. So it'll be the Saturday before. And what they're going to do is they're going to have a 5K course that will incorporate the new trail, which oh, you're yeah. proud of, accomplished yeah, this year and mm -hmm. all, and it will finish in the outfield. Oh, uh, no we've kidding. got the blessing at Jimmy of Jimmy John's Field. Right? At Jimmy mm -hmm. John's Field, yeah. and it's not official. Official, they need the final approvals. Okay. So I can only tell you that it's pretty, pretty certain, but not 100% yet. But over the next couple of days, you can look for something as well. So we have pre-R race events, post-R race events to stay fit. Anybody wants to get in shape, they can come out and uh, they can run with me in the evenings up by Stony Creek if they like. I need to point out too, we have two of the gentlemen here that work for Shelby Cable that I just found out today are going to run it with cameras. Really? So it'll be very fun to see what it looks like, a glow run after dark with a camera. And I'm really excited that the cable guy stepped up and said, let's run it. So yeah, definitely. We've got to get them in shape. Hopefully they are in shape and make sure. But it's a 5K, and they can walk and run it if Good. they want as well. I look forward to seeing that so, uh, video. That'd be oh, yeah, impressive. that would be an interesting one as well. So. Wonderful. Well, Mike, um, thank you very much for all you do. I you know, can't thank you enough from Shelby Parks and Rec and the Special Olympic athletes, not to mention 
these events are now becoming family events. You know, you have the whole right. families coming on out, and it's just something for people to do in the community. It's right. great, and yeah. everyone is excited about it because you're giving back to uh, special fundraisers, uh, yep. without a doubt. So, um, one last thing, Mike, if they want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you if they have more questions about the races? Well, you can pick it up on the forums. There's information there, but your best bet, you can either email me, which is on okay. the forums, or the easiest way is to call me via my cell phone at 586-484-5523. Any questions about, you know, anything that's going on? Uh, I'll just clarify a couple things. The fee for it is $25 this year instead of 20 but look at all the extras you get. We'll have pizza and a party at the end as well, a lot of extra food and all. And the other thing, another sponsor we just picked up that I wanted to make sure I didn't forget sure. that's helped us with the last few races, Eastside, uh, the Eastside Vineyard Church. Okay. We always accommodate them with our Jingle Bell Run because we cut through Shelby Junior High. And not only they are they working and cooperating with us, they're sending a whole crew out to volunteer, and they're going to be supplying, I'm hoping, their infamous trays of cookies that they always bring out <laughs> for the racers as well. So you get a lot of good stuff with the race yeah, to make it a more of a family event as well. Sure do. And uh, it's just, it's exciting. It's something unique. Everybody's excited about it. Everybody's talking about it. So now we just need some more people to sponsor, and we need some more people to sign up and run or walk. You can walk it as well. And that's going to be a unique experience even walking it as well. Definitely. So. All right, Mike. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today. And uh, we look forward to see uh, a recap when the races are done, have you back on and see how things are going. Good. That'll be great. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Mike. We'll be right back with Shelby Parks and Rec in the news after these Historic messages. Historic Hope Chapel, built in the 1890s, is available for rent, for weddings, and other ceremonies beginning the first business day in September. Hope Chapel is fully heated and air conditioned. Available amenities include podium and sound system, seating available for 80, two restrooms, party preparation room, and the Hope Chapel is fully accessible to handicapped visitors. For more information, please call the Shelby County Parks and Recreation Department at 586 731-0300. Hello and welcome back to Shelby Township Parks and Recreation in the News. Well, now we have a special guest from the Shadbush Burgess Nature Center, Lauren Oxlade. And Lauren, you have a special visitor here with us today. Thank you. That, I can tell, is a snake, mm -hmm. but uh, what type of snake is that? And the snake is looking a little feisty over there. He's nice and warm, so he's going to be active. This is a California king snake. It's a Ooh. North American native typically found on the western side of the United States. Okay, now, is it possibly this snake could bite? Um, we like to tell people that anything with a mouth can bite, okay. um, but this snake has been raised in captivity and is pretty used to being handled, yeah. so the chances of it biting are not very good. Now, I, 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 you did mention earlier off the camera, and we can talk about it mm -hmm. now, that the snake did bite you before, but yes. you want to explain what happened. It was my fault. Um, okay. I was feeding it and I didn't wash my hands between the time when I handled the mouse and when I offered it to the snake and I smelled like food, so the snake just confused me with food. Okay, now is it have is it venomous snake? It's not a venomous snake, and I'm so glad you said venomous instead of poisonous. <laughs> that's well, um, okay. a term that's often misused. It's not a venomous snake; it's a constrictor. Okay. So it grabs its food and it kills it by wrapping around it and suffocating it. Now, when it bit you, uh, how did it feel? Um, not not like much. <laughs> oh, really? Wasn't it has really tiny teeth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like sandpaper. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I guess maybe I'll touch it then. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, so you don't think it'll bite me? <laughs> no. Do you want to try and hold it? Um, <laughs> maybe. Can, I don't really like snakes a whole That's lot. That's okay. Now will it, will it wrap around my neck? No. It wouldn't look at you and think that you look very tasty. Can it sense that, I, I that I'm I don't think so. <laughs> You're doing really good. I don't know. No, um, it, I don't think so. Look at this thing. Oh, it's active because it it's my nice sleeve. and warm. It certainly can go up your sleeve. Well, I know. I don't want it to. <laughs> This is pretty cool. Man, look at that. Feels awesome. Yeah, they're not Weird. too bad once you uh, have He's them like for He's like stalking me. <laughs> Can I pick him up by his yeah, head? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Just, um, we call it hand walking, where you just kind of put one hand in front mm -hmm. of the other. Hi, boy. <laughs> or girl. And if you notice, Can it's I, kind of well, a, look at a bluish tint. <laughs> it's because it's getting ready to shed. Okay. He's in the book now. He's looking well, this for a dark place. Neat, uh, <laughs> oh, is that what they like, the dark yeah. place? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, stay comfortable there. It's a, an like animal it. that mainly comes out at night, so 
it's probably a little bit intimidated by all the bright light. Well, this is pretty uh, impressive. His skin coat, I guess, would be. Yep, you, they're you very, very pretty. And this is um, pretty typical coloration for the California king snake. I assume this snake is found in California. You may have yeah, mentioned the that, but I've got a little sidetrack. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. And they're called a king snake Whoops. because they, in the wild, like typically eat other snakes. Um, a lot of snakes eat mainly rodents, small mammals, um, some birds maybe, but this snake uh, typically eats other snakes, which is how it gets the name king snake. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you guys, his head sticking out. Look how cool that is. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. it likes dark places. In yeah, he found the only dark place. <laughs> Now, if I open the book to him, will he spring out on me because nope. he's like, get startled? No, I don't think so. Can just you imagine though, if you're just reading a book like this and all of a sudden you're going through the book and you say, whoa. Wouldn't be the first time. That, really? Mm -hmm. Now, let me slide this over to you because sure. I think he wants you to hold him again. Does he or do you? <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. I mean, I'm, I'll tell my son and daughter I held a snake I know. Today. A milestone. You did a good job. Yeah. It was nice though. It was a good, yeah, good, he's not a bad snake. snake. Not bad at all. They're pretty common in the pet trade, um, this particular type of snake, because they have a mild temperament. They're easy yeah. to take care of. Now, if somebody wants to come to the Nature Center, mm -hmm. this is something that um, you guys could possibly get out sure. and people yeah. to see and explain about, along with this snake and many yep. other uh, animals at the Nature Center. Yep, lots of different so, choices. Speaking of that, Lauren, recently we had the exa Exotic Animal mm -hmm. Day at the Nature Center, and I saw you on Channel 4. Yeah. Boy, going big time. <laughs> I know. Go big or go home. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. And uh, you guys did put on a beautiful um, event that day. Thank Why don't you. you tell us about it a little bit? Um, exotic Animal Day is an event that we have every year. It's uh, an afternoon event, and we have a guest speaker, Randy Baker. He's the owner and head naturalist at Naturalist Endeavors. It's mm -hmm. sort of a mobile education program. He goes to different schools, nature centers. Um, he does educational presentations. He does historical programs as well. Uh, so we have him come out to the nature center every year and bring a wide variety of animals. He um, has an alligator. He has uh, different snakes that we don't normally have at the nature center that people enjoy seeing. Uh, they get the opportunity to touch a lot of things that they might not otherwise get to touch. Uh, he also teaches people about what it means to have an exotic as a pet. So it's designed to be an educational program in terms of um, the animals themselves and whether okay. or not they make good choices as pets. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. I heard yeah, a lot of good things about ages. it. Yeah, definitely. Very good. And you guys do that each year at the Nature Center? Yeah, Sunday. every year. It's usually the first Sunday in March. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Mark your calendars for next year, yep. first Sunday in March. Also, uh, Lauren, we do have some programs coming mm -hmm. up, and I see the egg sighting, which yep. is March 20th from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, mm -hmm. and I know I've taken my daughter to this before. What a beautiful event this yeah, is. Yeah, it's a great program. Why don't you uh, just give us a little overview of what people can expect at the Egg Sighting sure. event. Sure. Um, egg Sighting is kind of um, a program. It runs throughout the day, and you don't have to come at a specific time. Okay. There are things ongoing, so we have egg dyeing stations in one end of the building. People are welcome to bring up to six hard-boiled eggs. We don't provide the eggs, we just provide the materials to dye them, to dye and them, yeah. often the volunteers try and come up with creative ways to dye the eggs, things that um, people may have not tried at home or thought to try yeah. with flowers and things like that. Yeah. And then the Easter Bunny will be there. And we still have the pathway out in the trail to collect the eggs yep. and the candy? Yep, kids Beautiful will have an opportunity. Yeah, there, it's yeah. very nice. Um, it's just a quarter mile loop, yeah. so you can walk the whole thing in a short amount of time. Even but if it's you nice have and casual and laid back, which yep. is nice. Even if you have young kids or strollers, um, it's you can navigate it with a stroller. Uh, yeah. There's uh, crafts going on as well as games in the other end of the building, so there's lots of things for all ages. Yep. It's a great family program. And that one is definitely more laid back because the day before mm -hmm. at River Bend's Park, March 19th, the egg we have the Mad Dash yeah. egg scramble. Mm -hmm. So um, we get a little bit of Beth, of both, yep. Beth the best of both yes. worlds. Okay. It's a little <laughs> tongue twister now. Um, also coming up, we have the Maple Syrup Program, mm -hmm. and this is Saturday, April 9th. Um, with this one, we got a little time left for that, but if they have yeah. any more information, they can contact the Nature yeah, Center for that. Yeah, they can give us a call. Um, that's a ticketed event, which means that there's specific time slots available, okay. and within each time slot, there's only a certain number of spots. Yeah. So it's definitely a pre-registered program. Um, you can walk in, but you run the risk of not having space available. Okay. And uh, there will be a guided nature walk. We're going to be serving um, ice cream with maple syrup at oh, the how end. Fitting. Yeah, so it's a good family program. And they will actually learn how to tap a maple tree? That I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I hope so. That's yeah. the intention. If they can um, find it. Weather permitting. Past, sure, mm -hmm. exactly. And whether or not there's a good accessible maple tree. Good. And one of the other programs uh, coming up, well, we have the skunk cabbage and the first signs of spring walk. The skunk cabbage First walk. signs of spring is coming up soon. I know. It's a beautiful day today. It's nice and warm. Right. You might even see some snakes out today. 
Um, the skunk cabbage walk, what's so cool about the skunk cabbage is it's the first blooming flower in Michigan. Okay. Uh, the, the pod that comes out produces its own heat, so often you can see it when there's still snow on the ground. So there is quite a bit of it growing in the park, especially down on our lower trail. If you've ever enjoyed the boardwalk, it's, it's all around the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the first signs of spring yes. then, when you see to that. To naturalists and yeah. <laughs> people that know what to look for, yep. Definitely, all right, great. And one of the last programs uh, uh, we'll talk about today, Lauren, we have the Spring Nature Walk. Now that's April 23rd, mm -hmm. right around the corner. Yep. Do you have to pre-register for that? They do not, they can just show up. Most of our events um, are walk-in events. But the ones that do require pre-registration, there's usually a pretty good reason. There's only a certain number of spots available, um, or there's activity activities planned at certain times. But that is a walk-in event, so you can just show up. Very good. Mm -hmm. And one last question on this yeah. Now, if this was, uh, does it like to wrap around people's necks? Um, I've never put it around anyone's neck. Typically, um, I know... probably wouldn't want to. No, I know some places do like to put snakes around children's necks for photos and things like yeah. that. We find that the closer an animal is to your face, the more likely you are to get bitten All on right. your face. So uh, we don't actually usually put them anywhere near our head. Well, I like you guys thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and the snake is probably not as comfortable um, in that type of a position, especially a smaller snake like this. So. Now, this is a constrictor mm -hmm. snake, so if it has a larger animal, it would constrict it first yes. before it uh, mm -hmm. ate the animal. Yep. We don't feed it live mice, and that's really for the snake safety. Okay. Um, but, yeah, if they were to grab something in the wild, they would certainly wrap around it before they tried to eat it. Really? Well, thank you mm -hmm. very much, Lauren, for being the snake on there. Sure. It was nice to be able to hold it. And for anyone else that wants to visit the Nature Center and see the wonderful animals that you guys have over there. Yep. Lots uh, to see. Just stop on by. All right, Lauren, well, thank you very much for being sure. on the show and thank all you. the information and, and bringing our special visitor. You're welcome. Very good. Thank you so much for watching Shelby Township Parks and Rec in the News. Please remember, here at Shelby Parks and Rec, we create community through people, parks, and programs. Thanks for watching.